Hi everybody, and thanks for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial for a fly that needs no introduction at all, the Prince Nymph. This is a fly that catches all kinds of fish in all types of water all around the world. For the version that I'm sharing with you today, I prefer to fish it in rivers and streams, especially in faster water types, such as riffles and runs. Now there are many reasons why this is such an effective fly, but I'm going to try to narrow that list down to just two. For starters, the Prince is the fly that represents so many different nymphs in moving water. We're talking stoneflies, various caddisflies, even the slate drake, aka Isonychia. Basically, if you have a nymph with a dark colored body in moving water, there's a great chance the Prince can closely represent or mimic that fly. Next, this is a fly that's tied with peacock curl. And I don't know what it is about that fly tying material, but anytime I place it on a fly, I tend to have success with that pattern. In fact, one of my early fly tying mentors used to tell me that every fly is a great one, as long as it's tied with either peacock curl or grizzly hackle. And I've always believed that ever since. The version that I'm sharing with you is going to be one that I consider a guide fly. That's a fly with, with a reduced amount of materials that can be tied in a short amount of time. If you have a guide that's been on the water for 8 to 10 hours, the last thing that person wants to do when they get back is to tie a couple dozen flies that require a lot of procedures and materials. Hence why I'll place this in the category of a guide fly. There are so many different variations that you can do with this fly, however by me reducing some materials and placing it on a jig style hook, that's modification enough to ensure that this will still remain a, su a successful and effective pattern on the water. Now I am going to be placing it on a jig hook, and that's more in the Euro or Czech style of nymphing. I really love the nymph, but one of the downsides of that is that you tend to lose a lot of flies because you're fishing really just in the bottom of the water column, and there's so many things that your fly can get snagged upon. By placing it on a jig style hook, you guarantee that that hook is going to be riding hook point up, which will greatly reduce the amount of snags that you have, hopefully reducing the amount of flies that you lose while on the water. That's the reason I'm going to be tying it in this style today and I greatly encourage you to do the same. With that said, I'm first going to share a picture of the finished fly, a list of all the materials, then I'll get into the tying procedures for this Prince Nymph. All right, let's start tying this Prince Nymph. For starters, I'm using my Sonfo Cayman Vice. In it, I have an Allen Fly Fishing Hook. They're J100BL. The BL stands for barbless. I'm tying this today in a size 14, though I will tie this pattern anywhere between sizes 8, the whole way down to a 20, 22. The bead is a tungsten slotted bead, copper colored, 2.4 millimeters. And I have approximately 10 turns of lead wire pushed against that bead. The lead wire is size 010. As you can see, this is definitely a heavy fly. For my thread today, I'm using Unithread Black 6 aught I prefer 6 aught because there's no messing around. You don't have to worry about this thread um, breaking whatsoever. You can really bear down on it if you have to. I like to start my thread directly behind the lead wire on this pattern and then build a little ramp up for my materials. I'll go over the lead wire. If you have any of it that that tends to come off just a little bit or bend there, you can just cover that with your thread quickly. I'll go over it a couple times and then bring my thread directly to the point above where the barb would be. The first material that we're going to tie on is going to be brown goose biots. Now with goose biots, whenever you're near the base of the biot, or whenever you're near the base of this material, they tend to be thicker and a little bit longer. And as you move towards the tip, they're a little more thin, or a little thinner, and definitely shorter. For this size 14, I want to basically grab a couple that are closer to the base. So I'm just going to select two that are down there. Trim them. As I place these on, I want them to be a little bit less than the length of the body, of that, the top of the hook shank, and I want them to splay away from the hook. So I'm going to add one in on my side first, after I'm sure that it's in the correct spot. Just going to lock it in place. 
and then do the same with one on the opposite side or the side facing you. With the excess, with this, these, uh, the butt ends of the fibers, I'm just going to wrap over them a couple times and then trim them directly behind the bead. If you were tying flies commercially, when you initially would have trimmed those away from the material or away from the uh, original section, you would have trimmed them a little bit shorter so you could just lock them in place and not worry about that whatsoever. Next, we're going to add our ribbing material. This is a material made from Uni Products. This is French oval, size medium, color copper. I'm pairing this copper color for the, of the ribbing with the copper bead. I really like to tie this in both silver and copper, though I do recommend this Uni Product because it seems to be a little bit more durable than the other types of tinsel out there. I'm going to lock this, this in place and ex again ex let the, the butt end of it extend upwards towards the thorax. Finally, I'm going to grab three pieces of peacock, three um, peacock hurl fibers. I'm going to line them up as close as possible by the tip, then I want to trim them. I typically cut about a half to one inch down just because that's a very fragile section of the fiber. And I'm going to tie them in by the tip. Again, I want those tips to extend almost the entire way up to the bead because that will really help with my taper for this Prince Nymph. After getting everything locked in place, I'll wrap forward and let my, rep, my thread rest directly behind the bead. I'm next going to wind forward just the peacock fibers. I want to keep all three together and I want to make sure that each wrap touches the previous one. I'll lock those in place with about three wraps of thread. And then with this excess material, there's not much left here, I'll typically throw that away. As I'm bringing my ribbing forward, I want to wind this in the opposite direction. The entire uh, piece of peacock curl is a really fragile fiber. There's lots of different things that you can do to help make it a little bit more resilient. The easiest is simply to counter wrap the thread. Or I'm sorry, counter wrap the rib. As I had mentioned, this is a guide style fly. There are so many other techniques that you can use, but whenever you're thinking of, from a time perspective, that is without a doubt the easiest. All right, after locking that in place, I want to ensure that I space that out correctly, which I did, and then we're going to add our final material. Now, hen hackle is also used on this fly. Though in this case, I'm not going to use that. I just feel that that's a material that's unneeded and unnecessary. Instead, I'm going to go directly to the white biots. I'm going to select two more from the, mi the middle of the biot section. And so I have two selected. I'm going to trim them. And now we have to determine how we're going to place them on this hook. If we place them directly on top, like with a normal Prince Nymph, they'll actually be riding on the bottom of the fly because this is going to be riding hook point up. I was in a fly tying class participating with George Daniel, and he recommends tying these directly on the side. Thus, they'll still represent many insects, and they'll have that nice white, which really seems to contrast with the peacock body. So when I tie these in, I'm going to have them go down the sides, and I'm going to have them so they're bending towards the hook. I want them to go approximately three quarters of the way down the fly. I tied in the one on my side first, and I'm going to line up the one facing the camera, lock that in place, and make sure they're even. Once I'm sure that they are, I'm going to take their butt ends, bend them forward, and place one wrap in front of that. After I place that one wrap, I'm going to trim them away, just the butt ends. Try to trim as close as possible. Now, if you really don't like seeing those little white end caps there, you can take some time and wrap over them, though you will build up a lot of thread. By bending them back and placing a thread wrap in front of them, you've now basically just folded them back towards themselves, and they'll almost look muted against the other feather. I'm going to go immediately to a whip finish at this point, and as I whip finish, sometimes I will 
cover those butt ends up. I place three wraps of my whip finish. And then next, before finishing this, I'm going to grab a little bit of Sally Hansen. This is the advanced hard as nail. This is a top coat. And I'm going to place this directly, as my buddy Don says, Jasper style, on the thread. Take my finger, make those beads disappear. And again, place approximately three wraps at the head. Take my finger, I'm going to wipe away any glue there. And then I'm going to trim my thread nice and tight. Now you have the finished Prince Nymph. This is the Euro check style on a jig hook. This is a great pattern to use. It's a very slender fly. It rides really deep, really low in the water column. There's tons of variations that are also available to this fly, which I plan on showing during another video at another time. So with that said, I'd like to first thank Allen Fly Fishing for the use of their J100BL jig hook. You can find that hook and many more at allenflyfishing.com. Next, I'd like to thank Uniproducts for the use of their French oval tinsel. You can find that tinsel and many other products at the Uni website. Most importantly, I'd like to thank all of you for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them directly on this YouTube page. Or as always, you can email me at tcamisa at gmail.com. Thanks everyone for viewing this YouTube fly tying tutorial.